All right, uh, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Christopher and welcome to another in uh, a series of interviews we're doing through the library uh, where we just reach out to cool people and talk about cool things. Um, so today's uh, cool person is uh, Farrell Dalrymple. And uh, Farrell Dalrymple is the creator of The Off and Wrong, Proxima Centauri, it Will All Hurt, Pop Gun War Chain Letter, and Pop Gun War Gift, The Wrenchies, and Delusional. Farrell was a co-founder and contributor to the comic anthology Meat House and the artist on Pale Fire, written by M.K. Reed, Prophet by Brandon Graham, Omega the Unknown by Jonathan Letham, Jenny Thin by Troy Nixie and Mike Mignola, and Caper by Judd Winnick. So uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Farrell. Thanks for having me. I like that introduction too of the cool, cool person. Uh, <laughs> I've never been introduced like that before, so that was great. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> that, that's the idea. Is we just want to kind of have have on cool people and talk about cool things. So uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is um, I've been following your stuff. I'm I'm a fairly avid comics reader, and uh, I I um, just in the last, I would say, year, um, came across the Wrenchies for the first time, which um, which kind of blew my mind. Um, and I I wanted to just kind of start out by asking you before we talk about anything specific, like like what was your first introduction to comic books? How did you kind of get um, get started, like like as a fan and then as as an artist? Uh, fan was pretty early on. I I think I uh, I just would see comic books in like the spinner rack, but I, I think the first time that I, I actually read comics were, uh, yeah, I think I had like a issue of like Rom the Space Knight and I don't remember what the other one, like a Spider-Man or something like that. And then I bought, I, I went to like the grocery store and I bought like a couple of issues of Marvel Team Up. It was like, I think it was like the Vision and the Scarlet Witch actually were the characters in each of those issues. And then I was just kind of like hooked and like I was like a Marvel kid after that. So I just I read Marvel comics pretty much exclusively until I guess I went, you know, it was like college age. And then I just kind of got bored of like superheroes and stuff. And I, I still would like read Bone and like, you know, different things like that. There was like or like Paul Pope stuff or like THB. I really liked that. Uh, but just I didn't really know what was going on with like the superhero type stuff. But um yeah, I just, I, you know, and it wasn't even like, I, I made my own comics probably. I started making my own comics just like in sketchbooks or like spiral bound notebooks when, I don't know, I was like young, like 12 or something like that. Like I would always draw, like I was, I had an older friend that was in the comic books and drawing and stuff. So I think I just would like copy him, you know, like, oh, he, he drew a Battlestar Galactica picture. So it was just like, I was like, oh, whoa, I can, I can, I can try to do that too, you know, but um. Yeah, I was, I, I would make my own, make my own like stories about like secret agents and stuff and, you know, or give, you know, make up like a superhero team and do all their outfits, but not write, like not have any like stories with them in it. It would just be, <laughs> it's like, oh, I want to create my own thing. Um, but uh, it, I, I would do that. I did that all the way up until I went to college, but I wasn't thinking about like, oh, I'm going to be like an, an comic book author. It was just, I still had this idea in my head of like, maybe I'll be like a fine artist painter person or a, I'll be a, uh, I'll draw Spider-Man or something. Or, you know, I, did, I didn't, I had this sort of like fake idea, but I, I think it was like in college when it hit me of like, oh, I should just, you know, these stories that I'm making. I had a, a, a cartooning class. I was an illustration major. Uh, at, I went to a school of visual arts and uh, my teacher, for this like it was like a graphic novel for illustrators class but uh, the teacher was this guy who drew comics for marvel he drew like this run of thor that was amazing to me this guy walt simonson so it was like really cool having like being a fan of the my teacher <laughs> um but uh i would i did this like even in his class i still did this like weird story about this like kid with glasses that like was in this institution or something and did like nothing like superheroes or Marvel or anything like that. Uh, but um, I think, you know, with, with that, when I was making that, I was like, oh, I should just like self-publish this or something. 
And it was like, I found out about like this, this grant that one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle guys did called the Zero Grant. And I applied for that, for, for not that book, for the first issue of Popkin War. Um, and uh, a couple of guys at school went to, were going, went to like, uh, they did self-publishing. And I think I asked them a lot of questions and they were like, we're going to this thing called the Small Press Expo. It's in Bethesda, Maryland. We're going to all get on the bus and go together and, you know, stay in the same room and stuff like that. Uh, so I went to that. I, I think that was like 99 or something, 1999. And uh, that was like one of the first ones they had. I don't, I don't think it was the very first year, but it was like an early one. And uh, yeah, it was like I met all these people that were doing independent books and it was just like trading comics. And I just I had no idea that that even existed before then. So I was like, oh, cool. I have this like self thing I made myself and people seem excited about it and they want to trade with me. I was like in this club all of a sudden. So um, I think after that, and I think it was like either like the following year or a couple of years after it was like Craig Thompson's came out with blankets at that show. Uh, like Frank Miller was there just like, Hey, I'm just hanging You know, I think he did like a signing to the CBLDF or something like that. Um, like Jeff Smith and people like that. Oh, I'm getting a call right now. I got to figure out how to stop this. This is the problem with doing it. Oh uh, yeah. No, no worries. So decline. Okay. Anyways, so I think that's what kind of spurred me on. Uh, and it seemed then too that there would be like, yeah, like mainstream people at like indie shows. And it seemed like everyone was sort of like friends. So it'd be like, oh, the, this editor at DC is hanging out here. And we both live in New York. So I would go into like the DC offices. And that's actually how I got that uh, job caper. It was like the first I think comic professional comic thing one of the first ones i did you know with like a writer and stuff um and that was through hanging out with editors and people like that that i would meet at like shows or just being in new york to helped <laughs> i guess so <laughs> yeah sorry no, that was a really long-winded you know encapsulation of my <laughs> fandom turned professional person <laughs> yeah no that's awesome um because uh, that, that's exactly um the kind of stuff we're interested in um i i kind of wanted to ask because because you started out um um you mentioned like you kind of made your own like like st stuff about like spies and then and then about like this kid in an institution so you're so you were kind of like straying outside of the superhero genre like already right and and um that what what is find really interesting about your work and and especially like with the Rinchies is how like even though there's all these fantastical elements like you've got like kind of a like you've got like a sci-fi thing but then there's also like some like sword and sorcery like feel to it almost in places and it's post-apocalyptic like there are all these fantastical elements but it feels um also very real and authentic um in terms of the emotions of the characters and um and just how how real they feel um especially being uh, children like like what it, what is your process in terms of I, I guess creating that feeling like do, do you start with the artwork or do you start with like dialogue or like how, how does your process work with that uh yeah that's that's I that's kind of interesting I think like I'd probably have a different answer for you like every year of my life <laughs> uh the past the past couple of years I haven't really um I've been kind of more in the mode of like, I guess, thinking about my own stories more. Um, it's weird because like, I, I think ideally, no matter what, because I work, I've worked with a bunch of writers and no matter which writer I work with, um, and I think like almost all the writers I've worked with, or I would say all the writers I've worked with have been great, but like, uh, I think I've got, been really lucky to be able to work with some pretty amazing, <laughs> Uh, comic book writers and uh, I'm currently working on a project like a children's book project with uh, a writer that I really like but um, I don't I I would still prefer no matter what to just always draw my own comics like that's what's fun for me is like this uh, I guess sort of integration of you know having these like story ideas that I can translate visually and so it's really hard for me to separate like, oh, I've, I, I've never just sat down and wrote a script for myself. Like I, I've written like, like the Popkin War stuff. I remember writing out maybe like a paragraph or something of like, 
sort of what I wanted the first issue to be. And then I went through and, and broke it down uh, with just, you know, brackets like, okay, this would probably be like three pages worth. And this would be like, you know, this many pages worth. And then from there, I made like a longer, like a Word document or something where I, you know, added certain beats that I would want to hit or like, oh, there's like a chase scene on this page and this, you know, and then I would just sort of use that with a, uh, you know, I'd staple all those pages, print them out like a script and staple, and then I'd just kind of carry it around me and wherever I drew, like, oh, I'm working on this page now. Okay. And then I could like expand it, you know, make something longer, cut something out as I'm doing it. I hardly ever go back and re redo stuff, but all that popping more stuff, it came out of sketchbook drawings that I did. Like, I think that boy with wings, I think I had drawn something similar a couple of times to in my sketchbook, just, you know, uh, and then it was like, I think, I think I, that on that, that particular project, I, I made a decision like, oh, I want to do a, I want to do a comic book. I want to do this as a comic book, but um, just, just because like, I've been working, like trying to, uh, uh, it's the past couple of years has been a little hard for me to work in general, <laughs> but like if I had to take a couple of gigs, um, you know, last couple of books I've done haven't been like world beaters or anything so it's like oh i gotta you know i gotta pay some bills here uh and i'm stoked about the prod the people that i've gotten to work with but it's just been and it's not their fault it's just been like i think you know everything going on in the world and whatever i could make excuses but i just haven't been super uh productive so, but i've been uh so as i've been doing these you know sort of long-term projects this children's book and there's been a couple other things i've been mostly just like writing stuff out of my phone of like because I have like a couple projects that I want to get started on so that's all like right now I'm kind of developing them more as slowly as like a script process you know and then I try to think like any like because this last year I did like this daily a daily drawing project where I was like trying to do one drawing a day and it, it ended up sort of taking over my day a lot of times it was <laughs> the point of it uh and that that kind of had its own sort of story process so with that I was trying to like if certain things I was like oh maybe I can use this for something else eventually you know so right now I'm trying to put out like a little book of all those those things so uh but I have like a bunch of different books going to like sketchbooks and things where I'm I'm like okay this is going to be the next pop and war book I do or this is going to be my new robot Todd series and this is gonna, you know so it's like that, that one, Robot Todd, I probably have the most stuff done on where I actually have like a cover drawn out. And, you know, it's like I did all that stuff first where I was like, okay, I got, I got these images in my head that I want to put down and then I'm going to kind of build the story around that. And that's kind of what I've been doing. So, sorry, another long-winded answer, but. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. I like, um, I, I it, and, and I appreciate you sharing the fact that like it has been a difficult year to kind of produce stuff because that, that's, um, that's something I've heard a lot from a lot of my my writer friends too. That it's just been hard to just be creative and to and to produce things in the last year. So I think I think that's valuable for for especially students to know. Um, you know that that sometimes that's that's just the case, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I I wanted to ask because um because I know a lot of your stuff um like Grinchies and like um, mentioned like the Robot Todd stuff and like Proxima Centauri and and whatnot. It kind of has like um i guess that it's it's kind of like this shared universe or multiverse um I, I don't know what what you would call it and and i kind of wanted to ask about that like did that kind of just emerge organically where you were like oh i have more stories to tell in this universe or or was that something you had kind of in the back of your mind from the beginning um yeah i think the thing i i say a lot is that i think it it uh like, you know, who knows, like, the way memory works. It's like, oh, man, I've, said, I've, I've mentioned this so many times, this must be what it is, but I don't actually remember. <laughs> this being my reason is that, um, you know, the the work of Madeline Langle, the Wrinkle in Time and Time Trilogy. And uh, I think it was in the the book that followed up the the three Wrinkle in Time books. It was uh, Many Waters, and it had, like, the the twin brothers that were, like, the cool guys, you know, they, they got their own story. Yeah. And in the beginning of that, there's like a uh, like a family tree of like all her works that someone I think had illustrated, and uh, at least that's my memory of it. It might not have been illustrated, but 
uh, there's some kind of thing on it, which like, okay, these are all the books that take place in uh, her, you know, metalingual science fiction universe. And these are all her young adult books. And they, there were certain characters that kind of were able to cross over between the two universes. And I'm just like, oh, whoa, that's awesome. You can do that. Like, relate all your story and then uh, years later I, I i noticed like kurt vonnegut would do that or he'd like put care you know like be like two unrelated stories but there'd be the same you know character that would pop up here and there or something um so i don't i think it was like that kind of stuff that just was, was appealing to me and i i like i think it's because yeah like my weird process for writing these things i get really excited about like like imagery or like why would this character be in this situation or whatever that uh it feels good for me to like, like always be building on this thing like oh, I'm creating this larger thing rather than just like oh I did a bunch of books that I felt like doing it's like oh I'm all I'm always adding to this universe or something like that so I, I I don't know I think it's yeah maybe just like a combination of those things like what gets me interested in telling a story and a lot of times I have these, I, I guess, ideas of like, oh, wait, this character, you know, like, oh, I need a character to interact with this person. It's like, oh, I, this character from this other book's kind of like that. So I'll just make that person him or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. And I, I think I noticed too, like, since the, uh, you know, advent of like the internet things like Tumblr and Instagram and stuff like that. I, I, it seemed like there was some, like some other people that were kind of doing that too. And like, uh, I guess I'm a big fan of like Mike Nola and he kind of does that. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> just like, uh, yeah, just appealing to me to like, maybe it's some kind of weird, like narcissism or something where it's like, oh, these are my, my characters. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just figured like, oh, I might as well be working on my own universe rather than just like, you know making money for Walt Disney or whatever you know not I mean I like all that stuff too the Marvel stuff like I said but um yeah as a as an adult even too I've uh I think I like it like the movies and stuff like more that even than I <laughs> like the comics as a kid almost I don't know uh but yeah I don't know so sorry that's <laughs> yeah no that, that's awesome um because because I'm always kind of interested to hear um, like people's process and stuff. Um, and I'm like, the, I like that you brought up uh, Mike Mignola. Um, um, so, uh, uh, because I, because I know exactly what you're talking about in terms of how his stuff um, kind of starts to weave in all these other characters and whatnot. And that I, I can kind of see um, that same kind of process. And um, as soon as you mentioned many waters and the thing on the interior, I knew exactly what you were talking about because I, I remember I remember the page that you're talking about and, and getting that from the public library as a kid. So <laughs> yeah, this definitely uh, totally meshes. Um, so you mentioned Madeline Lingle and and like Marvel comics and stuff. Do you have um, have you had any like just huge like just foundational like influences and 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 um, maybe it's comic book artists or maybe it's just like other artists or even you know like writers musicians like like what like are there any that have just really helped you in terms of like um um you know in making the art that you make yeah i mean i i there's there's a ton of visual artists that uh or just you know like or comic cartoonist card comic book like mobius is a big one and you know Mar marvel comics wouldn't be I don't think Marvel Comics without John Buscema, who was like my my main guy there. Um, but like, as far as like other mediums and that kind of stuff goes, I, I do get a lot from, I guess, movie directors. Like I'm, uh, you know, I like the works of David Lynch a lot, especially like, you know, years back, I was like really into him, but uh, I really dug the, the new uh, season of Twin Peaks. <laughs> I did too, um, but, uh, yeah, and Werner Herzog, just as like, I guess like, not just a, as a director, but also just like his sort of phil philosophical outlook on things. Like every like interview I've read of him, like I, he did this book, uh, I think it's called Walking on Ice, about him walking from, I think it was like from Berlin to Paris to see a person, in, a friend of his that was in the hospital. And that book was just, yeah, it was like really inspiring. I, I don't know. Um, I, uh, I listen to a lot of audiobooks too that uh, kind of keep me working. 
and um I'm trying to think there's a, a couple other guys that i was thinking of when you asked that uh yeah there's like a ton of cartoonists like uh like tayo matsumoto i'm really into his work um uh, tomo of course you know kira was like huge deal that anime and the and the uh um and the manga um yeah, I mentioned Mobius already, so yeah. <laughs> uh, I really like the work of Jillian Tamaki, who uh, did this one summer, and um, uh, Skim with her cousin, who I'm blanking on her name, but uh, uh, I think it's right over here to look at it. Uh, uh, I love the work of Gipi, the Italian. Uh, first, I can put out a couple of his books, and it's an Italian graphic novelist uh, he did uh, notes of a war story and some other books that i'm blanking on garage band that was great <laughs> i like a lot of young adult uh writers um i think because that was like the time that i read books the most i felt like when i was a younger person but uh i just listened to uh again for like i don't know the third or fourth time that uh the chocolate war which i, I read 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 a couple of times at Robert Cormier I like the way that guy writes a lot and uh it's a lot of children's book authors that I like like Maurice Sendak I'm a big fan of his stuff um and Richard Scarry uh I know he, he wasn't I don't know if he wrote as much of just drew the books but <laughs> uh I know Maurice Sendak did both um but yeah those are just I guess some guys or big deals to me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, awesome. And I, I'm actually, I'm super glad that you mentioned Mobius because I, um, I, uh, again, I, I, it's only been like in recent memory that I first kind of stumbled across like some of those like French science fiction, like illustrators, um, uh, like him. And um, I can't think of the guy who did that, the Lone Sloan books um, and like all of the heavy metal um kind of art uh is it richard corbin um, did he do this i don't know <laughs> um i yeah i don't remember it's it's I'd, i have to grab off of one of my other shelves but um but yeah the like the have you heard i, of, I can uh, kind he's of like see a, a modern guy but is another guy i just thought of that i'm super into his work is uh frederick peters do you know his work he's a no, swiss I artist no. uh i think he's swiss but you know so most of the stuff is in like french and stuff but they've had you know more recently too, a lot of stuff's been translated. Um, there's a British company that put out, Self Made Hero, they put out a, a series of science fiction series of his that it's kind of like sort of Mobius-ish, -ish, but it's uh, it's kind of more brushy, but it's called AMA. It's like A-A-M-A, -A -A, I think is the way it's spelled. And it's like four volumes, I, I wanna say four, maybe just three, but I think there's four. And it's in that kind of Euro, uh, album format you know they're like a little bigger and hardcover and that series is amazing it's so good I'm sorry to interrupt you I just no, no, you said Euro I was like oh Frederick Peters I, I gotta mention that guy he's yeah that's one great. Of the guys I'm excited about right now so uh that's one thing uh, uh book rec book and like comic book recommendations are like catnip for librarians so yeah so please <laughs> if anything pops to mind just let me know um yeah, so, uh, so I could definitely kind of see those influences. So that makes a lot of sense. And you mentioned David Lynch, um, which which kind of makes sense because I because I did notice that a lot of your stuff kind of has this like surreal kind of mood to it, right? Like like it, it's yeah. almost it's almost like like when I'm reading it, I'm I'm immersed in it, and it and it has its own kind of like dream logic almost. Um, cool. um, it, I, if that feels fair to say, um, yeah, but, I like that. Yeah, and it's it's just kind of interesting because I get that I get that same kind of vibe when I watch his films. Like it, it just has its own kind of logic that I'm I'm totally immersed in, and and like it just takes me to these strange places. Yeah, his, his stuff's really interesting because I think the more that I I like look into it, the more I I think like because when it, okay from like early on, like I guess the first thing of his I saw was maybe like Wild at Heart or something like that. Um, well, I guess I think it's the first thing he has I saw was Twin Peaks when it was on television. I think that's <laughs> the guy I was introduced to it. But um, it's, uh, it, yeah, it, I think with him, he actually is has all this subtext that he just doesn't talk about because he's like, oh, I don't really want to talk about it. I said everything in my, you can figure it out. But for me, it's like, I like the, uh, I guess the emotional 
think I, I like I respond to it emotionally and I just like I just think it looks cool and is interesting and I'm just like oh I and I'm never like what that doesn't make sense why did he do that you know I'm always just like oh I'm just appreciating this for what I'm seeing and hearing but um I think with my stuff I don't have any of that like <laughs> I'm just like I'm not that smart as he is to like oh this all means this and this and this but I do like looking at my own stuff sometimes I mean like oh I I totally know what this means now. I just maybe was too close to it at the time, but I, I could see I was what I was trying to go for here. You know, it makes sense to me now, but um, I don't know. So I think, yeah, I, I think there's like a difference. Obviously, I mean, that guy's a genius. I'm just feel like I'm sort of a hack, but <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I definitely, yeah, try to try to, I guess, put that, whatever that is that I respond to in his work, in my work. So, I mean, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah no um the, uh a, a tree looks up for me it's a uh, a uh, drie is the the guy i was trying to think of earlier oh okay yeah um so uh so it sounds like just hearing you kind of talk about your own stuff it sounds like maybe like your process is a little more maybe maybe intuitive right and then you're kind of like finding these connections like as you go is that is, does that feel like fair to say? Yeah, yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not very like systematic or, you know, like, I guess confident every, every line of, you know, I do a lot of erasing, <laughs> you know, when I draw, um, some days, you know, less than others, uh, but um, yeah, it, yeah, I, I would say that, yeah, it's definitely more intuitive. It's, it's, I've tried teaching a couple of times and that was like really difficult for me to like, I guess explain like here's this is how you paint experimentally <laughs> it's like for me it's like well you just have to do it you know if someone ever like asked me like how do you break how did you break in it's like well I didn't have like a plan I just like I made a book and then I was like in you know <laughs> there was just you know I just did it because it's like oh this is I guess I'm good at this and you know I'm trying to get I try to get better all the time you know it's like human being and as an artist and stuff but um yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah um well I think that's awesome and um and kind of just going back to some of your um earlier work because like like um you know pop gun and um like wrenchies and stuff um well especially the wrenchies I think because you did that over like a span of years and years right yeah I think I started it, um, when did I start that? It was like 2008 or nine or something like that. And I don't, mm. it didn't come out until like 2014. Mm. So. Uh, yeah, and that, and that <laughs> th those were in the days before things like, like Patreon and stuff. Um, so, so like what, what kind of like made you make the decision to like devote so much energy to your own, um, like your own work and your own world. Cause I, cause I think that's really unique and really awesome. Like I know um, like, like other writers are doing it, but it's, um, um, you know, I, I guess with your stuff, like that's something that I kind of um, just respond to is the fact that like, it, it just feels kind of, uh, kind of unique and how you just went all in on making these worlds that are unique to yourself without, um, like you said, like, going in and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna draw first, you know, Spider-Man for 10 years and build up to that kind of thing. Right? Um, I think I was just sort of let, I was, uh, you know, I'm not, I guess the smartest person in the world, <laughs> but it was just kind of this weird, uh, I got the opportunity to do the wrenchies, I think, because of it's, uh, there was a lot of uh, like time and place kind of stuff going on where um, I had just done a, a story in the last issue we did of Meat House, which was like a full color thing. And I had moved to Portland, like sort of, you know, around that time, like 2007 or something like that. And it was like, right around then, it seemed like there was all these big, uh, big deal, book deals being given out to graphic novelists. It was like this like hot thing, you know? Um, and, uh, like Jeffrey Brown got like some huge three book deal, you know, or something. And, uh, it's like a lot of people that I go to like, you know, this SPX small press expo type stuff too. Uh, 
and and uh, I had a buddy that was like a buddy in Portland that was like, "Hey, I I know these literary uh, uh, literary agents that are looking for a graphic novelist because this is like the cool thing now. Do you you should meet up with them." And I was like, "Okay, I don't really know what I mean." okay sure I guess you know <laughs> and so uh I think it was at a show in Portland that I, I got introduced to uh Bernadette Baker who's my agent on the Wrenchies and she's like she uh we I uh I I went out to New York and she took me to the different book, big book like I think like Pantheon had put out like a few books at that point and it seemed like there was a couple of publishers too that were like these graphic novel publishers that were in like the same building like we'd go from one office to like a different next floor down and it was like a different it was like the same publisher but they had different imprints you know um and i guess for a second it was like that too because they're like they're all, all the offices for for uh it was like holt spring is the main company and there's like uh mcmillan is like the big you know the thing under that and then roaring book press was the children's imprint and then first second was part of that. <laughs> but it's like all these Macmillan companies were in the Flatiron building. So I just, I was getting like an education and all this stuff when I, I went there, even though I'd lived in New York years before, I feel like just going back then was like, oh, this is like a whole different world that I'm in now, you know, looking, you know, having meetings with people and things, you know. Um, and so I think that it went up for like, okay, people can bid on it now. And I think first second was the only one that did. Like I think everyone else was like, yeah, we're gonna have to, you know, pass on that because I, I think the pitch that I, I had it was it was basically the story that I, I had done in this meat house about these two brothers going into this cave and um and there's another story in that same issue meat house that this guy Tom Herbick did he's like my favorite cartoonist he's fantastic uh he did this like post weird post-apocalyptic story and it just kind of like got my brain thinking and so I'm like I want to do like a post-apocalyptic thing but do it with like little kids and swords and stuff you know so I kind of like mishmashed these ideas and then had this meeting with first second. I think I told them, I was like, oh, I could probably do this in a year. It'll be like a hundred pages and stuff. And they were like, great. You know, they're like super supportive and everyone that works there is awesome. But, um, but uh, I just, uh, it wasn't like their fault, it, but it was like, I think because it was such like a hands-off approach that I just was like, oh man, what if I had added this bit to it and added this bit to it? And so as I was going to, I just kept adding more and more stuff to it. And that's, you know, got to be years and, you know, my agent's like, hey, you need to finish this book. And the only, only thing that was made me a little, uh, like a little more okay with how long it took on it was, I guess, Pope's Battling Boy had taken even longer to come out <laughs> for him to finish that. So, um, but, you know, I don't have that guy's uh, <laughs> cloud or anything, but, uh, so like, yeah, then I just got to the point. I was like, okay, I just have to finish this. So like, the, I think I actually read an interview with, uh, um, with the, this one summer, uh, I'm going to blank on her name now, Jillian Tamaki, where she said that she did skim in like, I forgot how many, it was like six months or something, where she just did like a spread a day, you know, for like four months or she had some, and I was just like, oh, I want to try doing that. So I just, that was like how I finished the wrenches was like, I'm just going to do a spread a day until I finish this book. Um, yeah. And then it was like a year after that, before it actually came out, like after I turned in the last page and, you know, there was a lot of uh, another thing I got an education about was like, is hands off as first second was with everything. The cover was like super involved. That was like a big process where it was like a lot of thumbnails, a lot of back and forth meetings with sales and marketing teams and that kind of stuff you know it was like a whole you know and then it was like uh it was back when they still had like new york times bestseller list and it like got on the new york times bestseller list and i was like oh that's awesome cool <laughs> what does you know what what does that mean like was I, you know <laughs> people were like well now you can say you're a new york times bestseller for forever <laughs> and then they took the list down like not too long after that i think <laughs> <laughs> Or they just where they they don't have like graphic novel sections anymore or something i don't know yeah well i well i think it's i, I mean it's such an awesome read um I, I the way i always recommend it to people is um i tell them it's like if like if you want to read like the dark tower by way of goonies like this is a, oh yeah i was listening to that dark tower stuff <laughs> oh really That's yeah so funny. uh 
but yeah, it's 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 really awesome work, and uh, I'm actually super excited to hear that there's more like robot Todd stuff in the pipeline because I um because I, I just finished up um uh, the Proxima Centauri trade paperback. Oh, cool. Uh, this last week, and that that was really good, and I just love the kind okay. of the continuation of that um that story. Um, I wanted to ask because you you'd mentioned like you you like a lot of like young adult um readers and stuff, and I think. I think you're really good at capturing like the voices of, um, of kids, it, like uh, to oh, like it in different ages and stuff. And I think that's really, really hard to capture. And and I, the way I always thought of it, and this is probably going to be like a weird comparison, but it it kind of reminds me of um, when I watched River's Edge for the first time. Like oh, awesome! I love that. Movie. Like it was just like you feel like it just feels like the way that that people actually speak, right? Um, and and that that voice um, where you, you know where you're kind of exploring, especially like some of the darker elements of what it means to be, you know, growing up. Um, I don't know. I'm just really impressed with that. So I'm just kind of curious. Like, Thank you. Like like well, I I hate to ask like how do you do it, but like you you know is is there something that you look to or or that you're um, I guess um, deliberately trying to explore when you when you're writing these kind of young adult characters totally like uh it's funny you mentioned river's edge because like the guy that uh he direct that movie tim hunter i think that's his name not to be confused with the books of magic kid but uh he he wrote my favorite movie well one of my favorite movies and the movie that the rent that i based the wrenchies off of pretty much i forgot to mention that part but it's like a big part of the Wrenchies is this movie called Over the Edge, which I don't know if you've seen that, but he wrote that. Uh, and that movie is amazing. It's like, it's got the same kind of vibe as River's Edge, but they're like younger. It's actually Matt Dillon's first movie. And uh, it's it's kind of, it's I think it's sort of loosely based on some kind of real events, but it's like these, these kids in this like suburban area. It's like one of those, oh, we just made this like little town with like no grocery stores or video game places or any place for the kids to hang out or do anything it's just like houses and there's like one this one rec center that they all hang out in and they just party like do drugs and drink and get in trouble with the cops who are always hassling them and stuff and it gets pretty like intense you know where they end up like rioting at a school and stuff um but like uh the way these kids talk to each other is like i loved it it's like it just they're just like little adults or something it's also like that uh that documentary style wars like you hear those kids and they're like new york kids in a way they're just like it was like some of them are like pretty little too and they're just like oh we got to get this guy man <laughs> it's like oh man it's like we're little adults um yeah so that was definitely especially with the wrenchies that was like definitely intentional um with the with uh like proxima centauri i was trying to go for this like i mean i don't know how successful it's, i mean I, I look at that book i'm like i really like it but uh i i had this idea of like you know, there's not really, I don't see a lot for like, you know, it's like, oh, the six to 12 market, like that's where like the, that's the big market, you know, big growth market of comics, but, um, or the only growth market as far as I know, <laughs> comics. Uh, but like, I was like, well, all these kids will, there's gotta be like this young adult interest. And, in, you know, so I was, I was basically trying to make this like, uh, like a science fiction, like emo young adult comic you know type thing where it's like oh I want their kids to like be swearing and you know like maybe it felt like forced a couple of times but I just I, I just remember being like a kid and like saying bad words was like fun and I don't know but it's like you know this this kid is kind of like spoiled and everyone's trying to like hey man it's cool like just relax and you know uh so it, yeah it was definitely like you know like I mentioned the chocolate war that Robert for me I like the way that, like those kids in the movie too. I like, I love that movie. Uh, just the way that everyone talks to each other, but yeah, specifically over the edge, that was a uh, big, you know, like I think river's edge is like really funny, you know, and it's definitely dark and like intense. Uh, but it's just, you know, it's like Keanu Reeves almost kind of hard to take serious, you know, like food eater, you know, that kind of stuff. But there's something about over the edge where it just feels like, I mean, it's funny too. It's it's kind of ridiculous seeing these kids like trying to act tough with each other, but um, uh, it's I don't know. There's something about it, it feels real, like it's like relatable, and uh, you know. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll have to check that out because it it does kind of feel like, um, and I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm just not in on the the movie 
seen as much as I used to be, but uh, like, I just feel like there is like this era of movies where they just captured like being a kid in such a real way. Um, like, uh, like I remember just like loving Monster Squad for that, that reason too. Right? Oh yeah. Was, Love that. Was, yeah. Was, they, you know, they felt like, um, the kids I, I knew and hung, hung around with, right. You know, except mm -hmm. for the monsters part. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 we have a few minutes here left and, and I wanted to, um, just kind of ask about like genre, right. Cause you, cause like with Proxima Centauri, like you definitely have like the science fiction element and you've got um, like more of these fantasy and like almost magical realism kind of elements and, and surrealism, uh, surrealism and stuff. So like, um, is how conscious are you of like, like genre when you're working, right? Be because, um, because I know that that things like uh, people want to market things in tidy packages. And, um, and one of the things I, I like about your stuff is it it kind of blends all these different genres together. So I'm just kind of curious about your your thoughts on that in terms of your own work. Well, I I guess I just like I like things like that. Uh, I guess defy your expectations. <laughs> like I know it's it's a weird thing because like I want to be just commercially successful, but I want to do it in a way where I don't feel like I'm. And I'm not, you know, trying to diminish anyone else's work, but there's, I, I think like, there's like a certain, a, a specific way that I want to like, I guess, present myself, you know, <laughs> and it's like, okay, these are, these are the kind of like, I'm going to, I'm going to draw how I'm going to draw and I'm going to write how I'm going to write and people can like, you know, maybe take their own meanings from it or maybe be inspired by it or whatever, but like, I want to do it in a way that i will feel good about, I guess, for years to come or something, you know, I know everything's temporal and, you know, all that stuff, but um, it's, yeah, it's something I think about where I, I don't want it, you know, there's like a, like, a, you know, the kind of, I'm not saying I'm like the super edge, edgy person, but like, you know, it's like, I like, I like things that are kind of hard, a little harder to get at, you know, it's like today, it's like, you can get anything you want on the internet, but like, I, I don't know, it's like musically, I don't want to just hear like, oh, this is the most popular song in the world. You know, it's like, well, I, that doesn't sound, you know, <laughs> appealing to me. I'd rather hear, you know, something like that, you know, this other thing. Um, so yeah, I, I, like, I like the idea of like having a science fiction story that, you know, like, I mean, I love Star Trek, you know, I, I really, you know, like that kind of stuff. And I like the idea of having the, the story just not be like this uh i don't know i i, I don't know what i'm trying to say exactly <laughs> but I, I yeah i like i like taking elements from different things and kind of mixing it up in my own way and just you know I, having a conversation with myself is like is this the kind of thing that'd be like okay in this world you know and that's like with the deal with the proxima centauri world is that like pretty much anything goes like it's like oh this is fun for me to draw because i don't have to worry like I can draw like a weird sci-fi cityscape in the background if I want to. Like I don't have to be like, get, oh, I have to go get reference. I have to look at reference now for like the Empire State Building and from like this angle. And, you know, uh, you know, it's like, ah, uh, it's a way to take the fun out of doing something, you know? <laughs> so it's like, you know, I, I, I think with like, like the setting is almost like not arbitrary, but it's, it's kind of like secondary to, oh, this is about these characters and this, this scene that I remember, I remember being in this weird situation with these bullies when I was a kid. And I want to, I want to write about that, but like, I don't want to just, oh, it was 1983 and, you know, the streets of Tulsa, Oklahoma or whatever, you know, it's like, no, I want to put it in this thing that's like fun for me to, to draw, you know, and it's like, oh, maybe I'll have the, the dog character bite the guy's hand off or something too. And just everyone's like freaks out or something, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's like, I like doing, I like genre stuff and I love, you know, aliens and, you know, any kind of big, big blood, summer blockbuster, but I just don't think I'm, you know, like I like Spider-Man, but I just don't think I could draw Spider-Man, you know, like regularly or something, <laughs> you know, and I, but I love being a fan of it. It's just, I would rather, if I'm going to create something, I want it to be like, you know, my own little thumbprint or something, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. How, how, so, um, 
And I like that you mentioned just like the fun of it. So how important is just like fun and just like the sense of play to like, like how you work? Well, it's getting more and more important to me. I, uh, I think that's like the, the, one of the hardest parts about like my job is like to try to figure out how to get into that headspace. Like, okay, I have to draw this thing. Like I have to, you know, go, oh, this grandma's tucking this kid into bed. And this is like, how can I, how can I make this fun for me to draw? <laughs> it's like, I don't want to draw grandma talking to a kid in the bed. I want to draw a laser gun or something, you know? <laughs> so it's like, that's, a, that's the, the, the trick that it seems to get like harder and harder where it's like, okay, I, you know, with Proxima Centauri, I had like, I think the first three issues, it was like drawing those, it was like an escape for me. And they were just like, it was, it was bliss. Like the time I got, you know, it's like every day I'd like do a page and just be like, oh, that was fun. Glad I did that, you know, pat myself on the back. But then I hit some point at that book, you know, it was like issue four or something where it was just like, ah, ah, I don't know what, you know, what that was, but it was like really hard to get back into that rhythm, you know, I almost didn't make it, but I, I made all my deadlines on that one. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, um, I think that's so important, um, especially for, for students to know, because I, I, um, I, you know, just like being able to at least sometimes find like just a, a sense of fun in your work and, and in what you're doing. So I think that's super rad. Um, and, I, and I think that's actually a, a really great note to end on because um, I do want to be mindful of, of your time with us. Um, so here at the end, I would just like to um, um, open it up like uh, uh, I, you know, for those who might be uh, watching this now or afterwards, you can um, find some stuff in our library catalog, but uh, where are some places where we can like find you, support your work, check out what you're doing, that sort of thing? Oh, okay. Uh, I, I haven't been that active on it lately, just in general with the internet, but um, uh, I guess Instagram, you know, that's like the thing I, I guess post to the most frequently. My website does not get updated in a while. <laughs> I have a Patreon too, if anyone wanted to I think like the low one's two bucks, but you know, whatever. I feel weird uh, <laughs> telling people that. And I'm on Twitter too. So, but I don't, awesome. I, I, I don't recommend anyone follow me on Twitter or anything, but <laughs> Instagram, if you just want to see some art and maybe like a cat in my stories, that's the place to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm uh, always a fan of cats. I'm actually surprised mine haven't come to visit um, today so far. Have um, you seen any in the background? I, I did. I spotted one earlier. So we got the we got the the Zoom cat quota, um, <laughs> which is good. Um, yeah, we'll put we'll put the links to the Instagram and the Patreon um, when we post this video on our channel because I, I think that's so important. Um, like if you're into somebody's work and and you feel like doing that, um, to at least know the options there. But um, but yeah, Farrell, thanks uh, so much for chatting with us. This is rad and is glad to have a conversation with you and get to know you a little and. Um, yes, yeah, super excited for, um, you know, uh, you, you know, just really like your work and looking forward to, you know, uh, what, what comes down the, the pipe next. So, uh, so uh, thanks for taking the time to be Thanks so much today. for having me. It was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, yeah, until next time, we will see everyone at the uh, next interview. And uh, yeah, take care, everyone. <laughs>